Hello and welcome to Gaming Together, a cooperative podcast. I'm your host, Philip, and I'm here with my co-op partner, Nave. Each pod, we play through a cooperative experience and relay to you, the listener, if this game is the crim of the crim of co-op or something better off playing solo. Hey, Nave. What is going on, Philip? Well, Nave, you know we are a gaming podcast, right? Uh, y- sometimes. A little bit. I think we're teetering on the edge of not being a video game podcast anymore, but... <laughs> Yeah, but we usually, each episode, we talk about a game or so, and a couple episodes we've actually done where we don't talk about a game in particular, but we just kind of do our takes on it. How good do you think those episodes usually do? Those are our only episodes, it feels like. What do you mean? Like, usually we have, like, a specific game. What about, there's, like, the Action Sack of the E3 episode? Oh, yeah, those episodes do bad. Yeah, so we're doing one of those. The Halloween episode did really good. Oh, did it? Good. I haven't looked at those numbers. Maybe. Anyways, let me introduce our guest, and then we'll keep going. We have... Now, do you like to go by Marco or Mark? You go by Marco. Yeah, most right. people know me that way. Okay, Marco and Zach from Audio Pong, which Audio Pong, Pong, not a podcast actually about video games, but it seems to be about everything. If you guys could give me like the uh, the little chewy bit, like what is your show, if you could describe it to me. Yeah, so our show is uh, its very conversation-based. We kind of talk about philosophy, our ideas on things. It's almost like an interview between the two of us. We uh, ask each other prompt questions about um, different topics. Like, we just did our, our Halloween episode as well, and we talked about our experiences. I talked about how I really wasn't able, well, not able, not allowed to celebrate Halloween as a kid. But it also, you know, it came down to uh, religious aspects of my family and, and then things got more lax throughout the years and things like that, too. And Marco was talking about his experiences as well as a kid and growing up. And, you know, we also talk about our favorite kind of horror movies and things like that as well. So, you know, it's a, it's a wide variety of topics that we can even get through in one episode. And gaming. We often fall into some kind of gaming. Yeah, we, we did a whole episode on D&D. And, uh, and our experience with DMing and stuff like that, too. Uh, one of my favorite things about your show is always the intro, where you guys usually have a prepared, scripted bit, or at least, you know, you write out something like a quote from a, some famous person or uh, your whole D&D mini playthrough you did. It was like, would you like oh, yeah. play through this campaign? Yeah. I really like those bits. Thank you. Yeah, that's kind of my shtick. I like, uh, I like preparing some kind of intro, uh, something to listen to. And uh, because we, I've noticed, I'm sure you guys look at your own anal- analytics and it seems that some people just listen for like the first 15, 20 minutes and then they, they're out or, or even less. So if they're just in for that first intro or something small, you know, they can get it, I guess. Oh, is that yeah. true? That's horrible. Oh, we probably lose so true. many people then. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to start strong, right? That's the uh, start strong, finish strong. Uh, We found you guys, or like we found each other. When we first kind of like started out, we were like on episode three or something like that. And I was just listening to all the podcasts I could on Red Circle, trying to find people that had the spirit I was looking for. And I remember like listening to you guys and reaching out to you and you guys agreed. Then I even like shared you with Nave and Nave was like, dang, this sounds like a podcast. Like what'd you you say about it, Nave? You're like, this is a um, podcast I want to be on or something like that. Yeah, he's shown me like eight or nine different podcasts. And I was like, this is one that I kind of just want to just chill with these guys for sure. Like the because uh, sometimes your conversations go exactly how my like stream of consciousness goes. Like mm. and there's like multiple like different deviations. I don't know how much you listen to this podcast, but I'm like the absolute worst at like keeping the conversation on track. And uh, no, that's uh, yeah. Yeah, that's something we struggled with for sure is uh, keeping a uh, a track of ideas. It, it divulges into a, a litany of different uh, experiences and topics that we go from in one episode. And it, I feel like it can get frustrating for some viewers, but I don't know. I kind of like that idea of just a stream of consciousness, like you were saying. Yeah, but it comes back to vampires a lot in your show, from what I've that's noticed. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Is that oh, this is a good time to bring up? What is that in the middle there? I was like, is that oh, either from yeah. the Vampire the Masquerade yeah, okay. or that? So that's from- um. Well, the sword is uh, the Atlantean blade because I'm a huge Conan fan. That's probably my favorite. I don't know, lore of all time. And then the painting is um of a character. My brother uh, is also an avid vampire fan. He plays a lot of Ravenloft D and D that he DMs, 
And that's actually a, pa- a painting he got commissioned of his character, Petr von Zorovich. And I just, I just oh, like wow. it. He didn't like it, but I like it. So it sits in the back. Why not? Do Perfect. you guys play any Magic the Gathering? I didn't. Not really. No, I wasn't allowed to get into Magic as a kid either. So <laughs> that was another thing that was in a, just wasn't there for me. But I've, I've seen a lot of lore for it because it, it, it's starting to merge with the D&D realm, I guess. They're, they're trying to like bridge the two. Yeah, and there's there's some cool like I like the idea of like uh, the plane walker. I think that's kind of cool. Like that you're, I'm not sure if that you're born with it, right? But it's like a certain type of person that can like go through different realms. Yeah, the well, I'm not sure. I'm not 100 percent on the lore, but um, my my main reason why is because when I first started playing Magic, they were in a plane called Innistrad, and we're it's a plane of vampires and werewolves, so it's inseparable. Uh-huh. When I think of vampires, I think of Magic the Gathering which is very strange that's a weird correlation to have but we are going <laughs> back to i say we like i work there but they're going back to innistrad right now like they're spoiling a bunch of cards and a lot of them are vampire and spirits and stuff and it's the spooky land and it's one of my favorite planes not only because i first started there but because the art direction is just so drastically different from all of the rest of the planes whenever they visit them but it's still very magic the gathering when you like just from a layman's perspective seeing a card but you called it in a strad the, the main the dracula of D D is strad that's oh. his name so i wonder if it's inspired by that maybe it's got to be yeah, yeah probably not many strads i would think walking around it's not like a family name <laughs> but you guys so what is so a lot of your gaming i know so i brought a pokemon earlier and when we were talking before the show started and I would get if I had to guess, is that like a big thing that for you guys growing up when you got into gaming, how did you get into gaming? Like, when did it start for you? Were you kids or were you adults? Uh, I'll take this one. So growing up, I had an older sister and she had a Nintendo Entertainment System. And that was just what we had. Like, and we would just play through Mario, like one through three, Duck Hunt, Track and Field. That was just like what we played. That's what got me started on the Nintendo track. From there, of course, I wanted the Mario games, which my parents eventually got me a Game Boy, a Nintendo 64, and that led into Pokemon, because Pokemon is huge as a media franchise. So I was indoctrinated very young. I even had like <laughs> all the Burger King. I had a Burger King poster that had the Burger King toys from Pokemon on it. I wish I still had it, but I'm sure it was ripped to shreds whenever I was young and stupid. But that was good times. What about you, Nate? I I guess I could plug the Game Positive podcast real quick. If you guys want to hear, if anyone of the listeners want to hear a deep dive into my video game history, uh, for two and a half hours I talked with a guy uh, on a podcast called Insert Coin. Actually, I think it's still called Game Positive, and the series is called Insert Coin. But uh, he breaks your life up into four quarters, and then you just discuss each quarter like in regards to years. So you just talk about the games that came out there. And again, it, it, there's very little note taking. So like this episode, I'm sure everyone can tell is a little different. We have like no notes this time. So we are like flying by the fucking seat of our pants right now. Or is That's that the same? Like That's good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that episode of his podcast was very much like that. So I have a hard time keeping it together since I'm the primary person talking. Yeah, uh, I my dad uh he basically used video games as like an expensive toy he's like this is expensive so it must mean that i love you so he he would buy me different video game consoles whenever i would see him like periodically throughout my life and um i never really was into gaming until i met philip in high school so i definitely played a lot of games but i feel like a lot of kids our age kind of grew up and like e- even if you were just even if you had no game consoles you probably went over to a friend's house and like saw a sega genesis or something you know or an Int- or a playstation right or something. a question we always ask people that come on our show of if you guys have any like formative co-op memories or just like a time oh, you yeah. were gaming together with a brother or um you know best friend something kind of notable that is a core memory well, I miss, for me, what I miss the most is couch co-op because I, I grew up with that. 
for sure. Um, and my brother was my first friend. So, and we spent a lot of time, we still spent a lot of time together. Um, and there's a lot of memories that, uh, you know, unfortunately, like when I was a really good gamer, like good at FPS games and things like that, uh, there wasn't social media. So I couldn't gain followers for the really cool shit I was pulling off. I can only now try to convince people that I used to be that good. Gotcha. But yeah, but um, so that's what I miss is those really like intense emotional moments in like shooters or a boss battle. And like one great couch co-op game that I'll mention is uh, Champions of Norath, oh, from, yeah. which was what PlayStation 2. Yeah. I yeah. think. Yeah. So for me, that's kind of a later console. Uh, cause I, I started like you first there with Nintendo and, and earlier stuff, but, um, but yeah, I, I really miss that. You, you, you really don't get the same effect anymore with multiplayer, uh, and, and really aren't games designed around that. And when I think about it, there's not, yeah, many I would say that most, um, co-op games today are mostly shooters, like back in, back in my childhood, um, like you said, Champions of Norath, that was really good. Lord of the Rings, the games that were based off the movies, those were really good. I used to play that with my cousin all the time. Um, every time the same I company, too, house. Snowblind, I think. They're the same developers, at least. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then Mortal Kombat, you know, I used to play that a lot as a kid, too. Uh, play that with my brother. It was one of the few games my dad would play with me as well, so that was fun. Um, my brother would just give up whenever I'd play games with him that was, like, competitive. So that was always very frustrating because I hate when people like just give up in the middle of something. It's like, no, let's just finish this. But he wouldn't, he wouldn't have it. He would have never finished anything. What a coward. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be that you way. Into that too, right? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that All Philip right. used to do that to me in Smash Brothers, or I would do it to Philip because oh. he would, he's just like, he plays Smash Brothers and I don't. So like he would just stand on the ledge and just smack me down every time I tried to get <laughs> back. And I would just be like, okay. <laughs> Can we please play Halo so I can snipe the shit out of you? He's like, no. Nope. I need some payback. I want to help you. We gotta play Smash. I, I made enemies in Smash, especially in the 64 Smash, because I was a Marth player. So down in B, we just reflect all day long, drove everybody insane. They did not counter me because I had the best counter. But um, okay, so I, I wanted to uh, shoehorn something in here. I wrote down some questions oh. and I was thinking we could round table it and just see what everybody's answers are. And, uh, just randomly, we'll start with you, Nave, if you're cool with that. That's fine. Are you ready for question number one? Let's do it. This is a pretty simple question. Um, what's the most intense video game experience you can recall? Or just an intense one. And it could be, uh, for example, like it made you cry or it made you just laugh hysterically or it's just memorable because it was so well written. I have a hard time not saying Yakuza, and I don't want Philip to disconnect mm. from the call because he's so tired oh of you. It, it comes up That's every episode. Game. But Yakuza 6 was just a few weeks ago I beat Yakuza 6. And I played the whole series for the past, like, two years, it feels like. And I, at the very end of the game, right before the first credit roll, I was just... It, I was so emotional. Like, it wasn't just that, like the bow that they tied the story up with. It was also like the accumulation of all of the memories of everything throughout the entire game, all the characters you meet, all of like the situations you get in. And I was actually like just sobbing, like just tears flooding out of my eyes. I was like, this is, it was just so intense. And I, I kind of, I kind of equate it to like the end of like a really good TV show that you like or an anime or something like, I don't get to experience that very often because I'm not really one to sit down and watch something. I have a really hard time sitting still. You're going to see, because you guys can see my camera feed, you're going to see I'm going to start fidgeting and spinning in my chair and shit, doing something weird. But um, yeah, being able to sit down and just get through that entire story arc. And it is like hundreds of hours. It's There's so much game in those games. I was very overwhelmed. The stories are excellent. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. That's a good choice. All right, well, you pick uh, the next victim then. We'll just bounce it that way, the last person who spoke. Let's give it to uh, Zach. You know, story-driven games are my favorite games for sure. Like, I, I don't play much, uh, like, uh, like shooters, you know, like Call, Call of Duty and things like that. I don't play, like, online with people. But... I can't remember any real memorable story endings that like really got to me, but 
I remember the first God of War had the hardest boss for me. I don't know if it was just my age or if games were just that much harder. And, you know, but God of War trying to kill Ares, I was just like, it took me like an entire day. Like it was forever. <laughs> that that was my like big, like, like intense moment for video games. Like I will finish this and it's going to get done and I, I'm going to kill Ares. <laughs> and I'll become Come the God. Dude. I don't know how you guys uh, feel about like when when you get stuck on something like that, you just have to do it right now. Because I have this oh, horrible man. problem with multi, like like juggling a lot of things at once, and so not not exactly multitasking, but um, I will have like eight or nine games in my head. Like I'll play eight or nine games in in one day, and like story games, RPGs, shooters, like I'm just juggling everything, and if I feel like if I have a negative experience as my last moment in a game, if I come back, I might feel that negativity and like remember what I was going through before, and then be less inclined, and inclined to play the game. Oh no, and, I, I that's why MMOs are dangerous for me because I I do have like an a completionist OCD, and that's why I actually really hate like things like dailies um, or in any in any game. That's just some it's like work. But for me, it has a reward attached to it, so my brain is just on that. It hits the button, the feeder button. I just have to keep. I have to do it. So I have to. Yeah, I have to pull myself away uh, often, actually. As Philip knows, and that I get, I get addicted to like clicker games. So I, it takes out the game part. Like of the, it's the same thing as the MMO with the dailies and stuff. But there's no game. You just press a button, and it's then numbers. numbers get bigger. It's like as 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 boiled down as you possibly can get, but you would be surprised how easily you could become addicted to something like that. And at least twice a year, I get addicted to a different game that's just that, with different pictures. Oh, I know. I've been to Vegas. That's all. It's, that's pretty much all it is. It's clickers and uh, stunning visuals to lock you in. It's like a a psychological effect. I think actually we've talked about that to some degree before. I feel like we've had to have because I've I've done research on um the serotonin and everything from like uh video slots like and stuff dopamine like that. Yeah, the dopamine, yeah. yeah and how it like it just hits all your reward factors it's got bright flashing lights it's got big sounds it's everything you know the only thing you're missing is sugar <laughs> <laughs> um, i mean they give away free drinks just yeah. walking around yeah so yeah i mean yeah you're right they hit everything <laughs> Me and my friend Steven would used to go to a casino uh, just out of town in our hometown. And just when we were thirsty, we were like, I kind of want some Dr. Pepper. Do you want some Dr. Pepper? He's like, yeah, let's go hit some slots and just drink some Dr. Pepper. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> all we were there for. It sounds like some expensive Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh, we would only spend like 15 bucks and just drink Dr. Pepper for like four hours, like just as much as we could. Because oh uh, it was, I don't know how casinos are outside of Oklahoma. But most of them will just, they'll just bring you Dr. Pepper or beer or whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially like, yeah, I mean, like in not small town per se, but I mean, Vegas is just like a grand example. But yeah, I mean, even like where we live, we have a city called Joliet and they have a casino there and there's casinos north of us too. Yeah. uh, And they're pretty casual like that. You know, they want everybody, they want everybody in there. That's why they're all friendly. They, you know, bring your money, man. You know? Yeah. Bounce it, Zach. Who's next? All right, let's go to Philip. What was your most intense video game session? All right, when you said most intense, before I heard y'all's answer, I was thinking more like the most like high emotion, not necessarily in the game, but just no, in yeah, the yeah. environment, I was thinking. So we talked about Smash earlier, and of course, that's led to many uh, semi-controller spikes and whatnot. But what really always got my blood pumping was League of Legends. If we're talking about an addiction yeah. once again, because everyone talks about how addictive League is. But the amount of times me and Nave will be playing, or I'll be playing with my wife, Jana, or another one of our friends, the more people we have in a party that are all in comms, the louder we get. So we are just screaming over every like little play. Like someone will just call like Nave like be like, I'm going in, I'm dropping in mid, because Nave's usually our jungler. And then, like, whoever else will be in it and be like, all right, man, let's do this. Dive, dive, dive. And then you just see, like, the the first blood or the, like, if you just see both of them get killed by the turret, it's even funnier. Because it's like, what are you doing, <laughs> man? You idiot. Why would you go in right then? Like, of course, because in League, the most toxic people you're going to encounter are your own team, you know? And <laughs> it's all, yeah. 
Yeah. And so those moments are just incredible. And it's, it's just, especially if it's like a super chill ARAM or something like that. And the more, like my, my favorite thing to do is just getting like as many people we can in a custom game. Nave hates this because usually I'm like on the winning team and we always like yeah. force Nave to go on the other team to balance it out because we're like the closest in skill. And man, it is so fun. If we can just get like You're a 3v3 playing? ARAM. Oh yeah. It's you can never get away. Yeah. You're always in league. It's a very, I, I used to play a lot. I mean, it's been a while. I think, um, oh man, it's, it's been a long, the last time I played it like seriously, they had, the new character was the double ax guy. I don't even remember his name. Sounds Ola? like Draven. I think with a G. Draven. Yeah. Draven yeah. was brand new. So that's some years back. I think now that's the time. Yeah, that was way but, back. Uh, yeah. No, I used to be, uh, I used to be really good with um, the Prince. Jorah? Yarvin. I forget. Yeah, I've never Yarvin. played League. Yeah, I've Yarvin. Oh, no. Yeah. No, I don't even know the Well, see, I'm, I, my problem with those games, I'm really, really competitive. And and I, I'm much better now. But when I was younger, I mean, I would have cold sweats. My hands would shake because I would get so involved with it. And maybe actually making after listening to your story, that makes me think like that should have been my choice. But mine was um, actually uh, the writing in a game from um soul reaver uh, like it's soul reaver like i say kane i don't know if you guys played playstation one lk games um actually it was soul reaver soul reaver 2 now that i think about it but basically the, it was a it's, it's a moment in a writing i didn't until this moment think that video game writers could be as good as say the greats or you know or be as clever in, in, in like what the storytelling put forth and for me it was finding out raziel is the soul reaver why I didn't put that together for some reason throughout the storyline. It came together at the end for me. And then it just brings, it's such a great way to like, I, I'm a very picky person when it comes to like store, uh, time travel stories. You know, I, I don't like when they try to like get too involved with it. And this was kind of like a time travel story, Okay, but it looped together really well. And just for everything to come to a head like that was sort of, imp- it was very impressive. It's something I'll never forget. But that's a really good one. I yeah, like the, the, how intense a PvP games can get is definitely like a runner up for me as well. Yeah, I get really mad on um, oh, what's the the soccer with the cars? Rocket League. Rocket League. Oh, I get yeah. I get real mad on Rocket League. I Come I have the angry like. I have the angry too. Man, Philip, I feel bad for everyone that has to deal with me when I'm in that state. I will get incredibly oh, yeah. mad. Yeah, it's probably a good thing I don't have a mic when I'm on the, the PlayStation. <laughs> it's therapeutic. I, it's like an out. That's why. See, now games so like LOL was obviously really strict about like their toxicity. Yeah. But back in the day, toxicity was just part of the game. I mean, I remember yeah. playing Day and Feet, which was a mod for the first Half-Life, right? I don't know if you guys ever played Day and Feet. I played the Source version. Okay. Yeah, like the yeah. newer one. Yeah. yeah. So that it's that's the same game. But back then when it was just mods, I mean... You could funnel in. They used to have a spray paint feature in the old yeah. Half Life games, so you could put any picture you wanted in there. And boy, we did. <laughs> so, I mean, it was so time. We talked the maddest shit possible. I mean, it was so vile. I mean, it, today's atmosphere that just would be a no go. There's too many this, people are too sensitive. I feel like now for that kind of thing, would just not fly. But yeah, I mean, it was therapy, man. You know, you gotta let it Which, out. Yeah, for sure. To get into that a little, you know, they just disabled all chat in League of Legends. I did like, not know that. You cannot talk to the enemy team anymore at all. At first, that's like, interesting. Like, custom games. At first, I was like, that sound, like, why would they do that? It's so annoying. But then I thought about it and I was like, has there ever been a good situation where, like, <laughs> talking to the enemy team, like, benefited us <laughs> emotionally? Well, I mean, no. there's the occasional game where you have, where you're in, like, a normal. And everyone's just jovial, you know, the one in yeah. the 20 game. But usually, I, especially me, I am a little bit of a, I'm a little braggadocious. <laughs> so oh, dude. I would just be like, yeah. oops, as soon as I kill someone or something, like, I'll do that. So there's a little poke. I, if I would argue, actually, that that is the point of an all chat is to talk shit. Well, yeah, because you that's sort of the stable your opponent, right? You yeah. Wanna, you want to mannerings a thing. Yeah, but are you going like to do that in a uh, Grandmaster chess match? <laughs> like, are you just going to be like, I would actually, I would and be like you that. dunked I on Scrub? <laughs> Dude, I would watch that. Are you kidding? And I love chess. Like, I used to play daily. Oh, that's <laughs> such a good idea. There you go. That's a million-dollar idea. 
Talk like shit they, chess. Like they just make it. They make a, a move and take a piece, and they're like, "Your intellect is in question, my friend." <laughs> <laughs> He's about to move. I wouldn't do that. That's not a move I would take. Yeah. Quite the curiosity you are, my friend. <laughs> and then well, you know. <laughs> Like you talk about the usefulness of all chat, but I feel like I've had my best encounters in league, like just whenever I was started playing like solo top lane, because something about top lane, you're in your own galaxy up there by yourself in this other laner. And you're really just like oh, yeah. on guard chap, you know, like I'll meet you up there. And let's, let's do a tussle. Yeah. And it's like, you'll play him and I'll just be like, well played. Like, you know, like if someone dies, you throw out the WP, uh, if they go for like a mad play and it actually like pays off and you're like, wow, that was incredible. Like great Fiora <laughs> work, but any other lane, it's just non-existent. Well, it's, I feel like all the, the conquest, uh, what do they call it in conquest? I think is a smite term, but that's what it is, right? It's, it's yeah. the laning game map. So that crap. is to me like several mini games in one, like everybody's got different jobs. It's very role specific. Uh, and I wonder if they intended that originally, because I know even League of Legends is based off of a mod, right? Um, yeah, it was a... No, it's based off of Dota, called. which Dota was a mod for Warcraft 3. That's right. Defense of the Agents. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Well, I just... It's really clever. I never... Because I never played the mod off of Warcraft 3. I didn't even know people modded Warcraft 3 until... Um, I think actually until LoL came out. I had no idea that people were doing that. That was becoming a new way to competitively game. I mean, from an art, from what is a, you know, essentially an RTS game. It is an RTS game, Warcraft Three. Well, don't worry, Blizzard killed it. Well, yeah, yeah. Blizzard to me is like George Lucas, the artist killing his own art. <laughs> and if that offends you, then <laughs> we don't have to go there. <laughs> I have a friend That's who's how I a look pretty at it. avid Star Wars, uh, Star Wars enjoyer. And I, what's the word for that? <laughs> I don't know. But, Enthusiast um, fan. Fan is probably what my simple yeah, word Yeah, like what, a Trekkie is someone who likes Star Trek. What is a Star Wars? I don't know. I really like yeah. the meme thing. He's an enjoyer oh, of it. You can always <laughs> see the memes. It's like Dark Souls 1 enjoyer and then Dark Souls 2, like Cretan. And it's always like Dark Souls 2 is bad because I'm in like 19 Dark Souls Facebook groups. That's how it always comes down to. That's another game, but I, we could do, I think, a podcast on that because I'm I'm a Kingsfield fan all the way back from like PS One, and that's where that's where the origins of Demon Souls and Dark Souls comes from because those are extremely moody, difficult, immersive games. I mean, they kicked your ass, and back then it was just like, oh, okay, I got to go back to my last save. Oh, that was an hour and forty five minutes ago. You know, when you're a kid, though, time. What do you care about time? I care about time now when I game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? yeah. Even then, I, ne I never enjoyed the grind. Like, like, I hate grinding in video games. Um, Shadow of War does a good job about it, though, like uh, the Lord of the Rings game. Um, you don't really feel like you're grinding. You're just going around killing orcs, but you're, like, leveling up at the same time. So it's like, but you don't really, it doesn't feel like a grind because it's so enjoyable just to kill those things. Plus, they make each, like, orc captain feel like its own mini boss or its own character, opposed yeah, to just you know, another orc you kill they have a lot of personality to them too because like they'll if they kill you they level up and everything and they yeah. like you know they get like a vendetta against you and they come back sometimes with like a missing limb and a prosthetic I'm like this is intense and yeah, they really nailed that one old assassin's creed lord of the rings so you guys always try to hit some uh deeper level stuff a lot deeper than we kind of usually go on our podcast so here's my question for y'all so we all know kind of a competitive nature in humans, like when we game, when we play sports, that usually harkens back to like our competitive nature for survival, such as like hunting, gathering, just survival overall. Now, we are a cooperative gaming podcast, but we don't often take a look about what in the cooperative actions we do in gaming that kind of like spark that special, that like feeling in our monkey lizard brains that want us to keep going to work together that, that warm glow you get whenever you like you move the puzzle piece so your friend can make it through the maze type deal you guys have any like kind of thoughts on that subject well if you don't mind i'll i'll, I'll say something first yeah, go ahead yeah. um that touches on i think it was i don't know if carl young is the first one to, to write about that but um 
even altruism at base is a selfish uh, notion, right? Uh, you, you don't do anything without, the argument is this, you don't do anything, no matter how altruistic, without uh, feeling reward from it. Now, that, that's a good thing. That sounds selfish, but it's actually a good thing because it's what motivates a better outcome, uh, and, and it can motivate, motivate a better outcome for the other person that you're doing this for, even though you are finding some reward from it. So I would say in cooperative gameplay, that exists in any version of that, even if it's puppies playing, you know, or, or humans playing, you know, brothers playing together on a couch, uh, a video game on a couch. That's the, the same effect is taking place. Uh, he's learning, we're teaching each other, for example, what we're good at, what we're bad at. And what we're bad at, hopefully the other one can pick up the pace in, right? Because that's, that's, mm. that, that's the essence to me of teamwork is that... Uh, yeah, you, you pick up each other's faults and, right. and, and you help each other's strengths. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I think that's what's really good and healthy about cooperative play. Now, what's interesting to me is that I think I'm kind of rare in this. I don't know. I've never really talked about it with a lot of people, but certainly growing up and even online gaming, I like to play competitively even with my friends. Uh, I like I like dueling, for example, in an MMO or, you know, like, uh, yeah. you know, you, you put together a character build for those who don't know. And then you sort of test your skill with that build, the choices you've made for your character against another player who has made his own independent choices on his character's prowess, abilities. Um, so I love that because I learned so much from it. Now, I think a lot of people that don't like that don't like it because it's comp competition between friends or in this the example that I'm giving. Uh, so I'm kind of, I feel like I'm not unique, but I, I often found that when I try to do that with my friends, they're not in there. They don't want to do it or it doesn't really? last long. Like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like a mortal Kombat game doesn't last long, especially if I start winning, they just, ah, eh, you know, See, but on the other hand, I don't know. Cause like, okay. So when it comes to competitive nature, I, I, I love competitive, competitive, being competitive, boost your testosterone which i mean if you're working out you're trying to find every way to do to do to level out your hormones and boost that testosterone especially as you get older um also just being competitive makes you better at that and it helps it, it teaches both of sides i would say being competitive is is very useful um especially in like rough and tumble play um like, like even if it is on a video game you know but like more so in in the in uh you know real space uh you can you learn about your body and how, how what hurts what doesn't hurt um how where how you move in space and things like that too i and i and i enjoy competitive i think you can be competitive and and friendly at the same time like you don't need to be enemies to, and technically that is cooperation you're yeah, cooperating for sure you're not actually hurting the other person's learning or abilities or right you're not you're not trying to anyway. dominate the other person mm -hmm. and make them feel bad you're just you know you're you're making each other stronger which i think uh, is, is very useful maybe you're not playing right then if you're not trying to dominate him <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i mean the ego plays his part too i who doesn't like to win and, and when i said earlier that i'm competitive that is you know i'm a i'm an attention whore and i think zach can attest to that like if I go up on extroverted, it, yeah, I am. If I go up on stage, it I actually get more confidence the more people are listening to me, right? The bigger the audience, the, the more comfortable I feel. I actually feel very awkward in front of a smaller audience, like you know, two or three people. Um, and not everybody gets that. I, I know what you mean, though, because it's like you you feel the focus, right? Like everyone's looking at you. And in, like, in, in my way, that yeah. So like, yeah. if every if I if ten if ten people turns into a thousand people. And this it's is a, a mess. Off track it's here. A mass of but nothing. they're all they're all expecting the same thing from me. Let's say that helps me focus, yeah. and it happens in game. The reason why I mention because it, it happens to me in gaming, okay. which is kind of why I like an audience in competitive play. But my ego, my ego, the selfish side of that for me is that I would rather people watch me play a game than I watch them play a game. I lose interest very fast in that if it's not comedy based. I totally agree because I I don't understand how Twitch is a thing because who wants to watch people play games? Like I never got that. Like <laughs> I don't want to watch you play a game. I want to go play the game. Like that's why I can't watch sports either because right? it's like I just want to go do the sport. Like I want to go play football. You know, it's like um, yeah. It's, it's, except for sumo, for some reason, sumo is the only sport <laughs> I enjoy watching. I, I don't know why. There's something about it. Maybe it's because. It, there's no way I could ever be a sumo <laughs> too, too tall and lengthy. No, nah, don't you know? say that. 
Well, not to divulge <laughs> like too far from the initial point, but uh, the only like actual kind of sport I feel like I watch is professional league play, and that's just to see the like mastery of the craft. If you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like oh, yeah, besides that, yeah. I agree with your stance on that. Well, no, so, it's interesting to me. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, I was just if you got something to say on that, go for it. No, I was just going to add that uh, what I do find in, interesting and respect about competitive video gaming is that uh, it's sort of mind versus mind. There's no, yeah, there's some physicality involved. Obviously, the speed of you know hand-eye coordination, but there's no there's no gym time involved. You know what I mean? There's no, you're not, uh, there's no endurance. Not really. Uh, it's all really a practice of the mind. Like mm. if you could take chess and, you know, amp it to a, up to 11, but that's all I was going to say. Yeah. I get that. So Nate, do you have any feelings on a uh, cooperation versus competition or kind of like what we look for in our games? Like philosophically or just my experience? Yeah, man, just like, this is our chance to like dig deep. Like we've never had an episode where we actually talked about our feelings besides the rock band episode, probably. <laughs> Yeah, well, that you just snatched it away from me. I was going to just talk about Rock Band a little bit more, I guess. Well, go ahead. I just played a, a, an absolute ton of it yesterday, and I'm in like a Discord group with my crew, and we had two different bands playing simultaneously, and we're just talking just mad shit to each other in the chat just for no reason. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, in, the, in Rock Band 4, the newest rendition of the game, um, you, if you add people on your friends list, you can see your score in real time as you pass your friends so um oh, in the oh, middle in the like, middle of the song so it's pretty neat it'll just pop up like hey you just passed uh this x person and so it always there's there's three really talented drummers in our in our crew and they are battling it out all the time and i'm kind of a jack of all trades master of none so i don't get a lot of opportunities to go oh shit i beat I just beat our lead vocalist in this. Like, I gotta go talk shit now, even though this person yeah. probably just hates this song. They can't sing, uh, you know, um, what is it? Somebody to Love by Queen. I don't know. That's the first song that came to my head. But um, it's like, yeah, it's uh, it's it's very cooperative. And it used to be a lot more competitive, but there are no competitive. Besides the rivals challenges, there are no direct competitive uh, features in the game. So that's a little disappointing. You can't go head to head score duel, you know, like in person. But. I miss that. Yeah, Rock Band used to I was just saying Rock Band, you got to do that. Yeah, I mean, you said bars, the, every bar around here used to have like a Rock Band night. And they oh, had like really? a competition. Yeah, dude, it was big like back in the day, We're like especially with Guitar Hero too. They used to have like competitions. And it was funny to me because these guys who, I mean, and I'm not dissing them, but they clearly don't go to bars. So they would come out for these competitions and they're just, they just blow everybody away. I mean, they're just masters of it, you know? And I, I always thought it was really interesting. I love the drumming on that too. I got rid of my, my rock band two like gear recently, Yeah. but I used to know a guy who was a professional drummer. And it was interesting to me is that he could not play the drums on rock band. Hmm. It was too different. And I was curious how, like, like how different could it really be but he could not do it yeah because those games kind of started as a training tool like that was the, that was the idea behind them the guitar hero wanted to be able to train like people to to be just to get the kind of feel for a guitar yeah i think it all yeah. comes down to legibility um you have to learn to read it's basically learning sheet music essentially it's, if you're talking about the drums because that, that's the only instrument that i mean besides singing which is obviously just singing into a mm-hmm. into a microphone but um, the drums are the closest thing to the real thing. But even then, you have to train your brain that the red button means snare, right? You have to. It's, mm. it's obviously not a snare. It's just a pad, and all the pads look the same except with the with the colored rim. Um, one interesting thing is to because since I've since I've been really getting balls deep into playing real guitar, my skills at Rock Band have atrophied like incredibly. Mm-hmm. Like I I am losing all of my skills all of a sudden uh my fingers slip off of the guitar neck all of the time like the, the plastic one because i'm mm. trying to my brain i like i'm so familiar with the song i can play i can i can imagine it in my sleep and then my brain is like that's not the same string you need to go down to you need to go to a higher string <laughs> and i'll slip off of the and i'll just miss like four notes because i'm like oh no what's going on i it's because so, i used to play on expert just be like crazy good now i'm playing expert and like embarrassing myself because half oh, of the song God all of a sudden vanished but it's a night and day difference i agree having i plan to go back to guitar playing because i'm really 
bad at it. I used to practice, but it's a, yeah, it, it, there's just something different about it. It's a different rhythm. It's a, oh, it's a whole different mechanical function anyway, but I yeah. get that. Did you ever play uh, Rocksmith? Because that's like where you oh, actually yeah. plug in your guitar. So yeah. I was wondering if that if that's the, pretty. I have the cable right here plugged into my computer. But, oh, um, so uh, uh, play is that a, do you find that to be a good tool for learning? It's spectacular, but that was where I was going to go after that part was uh, Rocksmith, again, is like is specifically like learning how to read tabs in a different way. And mm. one of the coolest things on YouTube is watching like really talented professional guitar players go and play Rocksmith for the first time. And just they're like, I know how to play Bullet for My Valentine. Let's play Scream Aim Fire. And all of a sudden they're trying to they're like, I'm not looking at the screen. I'm just going to play it. But it's because mm -hmm. they'll look at the screen. They're like, how does anyone look at this? And it makes sense. But you do slowly get better. There's a Twitch streamer to touch on something you guys were talking about before. I don't really watch Twitch either, but there is one type of Twitch streamer I like to watch. And those are uh, Rocksmith streamers that are just really talented that, at guitar and know how to read the 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 charts really easily. Um, you On the PC, you can download custom DLC very easily. So I have like a, a, sh a shit ton of you know, tool and Gojira and, and La Lamb of God and stuff all in my, like that never oh, popped awesome. up in the normal DLC on Rocksmith. But yeah. they, you just download all of that stuff for free from people who are passionate about guitar and go and chart them themselves. Oh, and they translate it over. That's really cool. And um, so there are guys who are really talented at just sight reading. Sight reading being like, I don't, I don't know how to play this song. I'm just like going off of what the screen is saying. And uh, one of my favorites is Chain Brain. I don't know if I brought him up. I don't know if I mentioned You've him. You've mentioned in that him like twice anywhere. now in our history okay oh okay i mean i meant like in that story just in case oh, it's, no. this is always someone's first episode philip oh it's okay. always someone's first <laughs> well, we are the one podcast. he's very funny one of the things i just last night because we were drinking played rock band and we played a twilight of the thunder god by amana marth i'm not sure if you guys are familiar mm -hmm. yeah, with oh, yeah 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 Hell yeah, it's an awesome band. But um, I just, we saw them like in concert, yeah, in they concert, boat like, and everything, like three, four years ago. They're awesome. We probably saw them in the same tour. Uh, he they came through Oklahoma, and on the same day, uh, Slipknot was here. So when we got to the venue, there was maybe like eight, eighty people in the audience. So and it's so we were like all oh. the way up in front of the stage, and Amana Marth was just like they were like talking to us. You know what I mean? In between songs, they were like. They just like look down at us and be like, "You, thank you for coming here. We know Slipknot's here. This is insane <laughs> that, you, that you're here instead of there." Like, that mosh just, like, pit must have been awesome. It was That's scary. Like the meeting of the know. clouds. <laughs> the, the thing about the mosh pit is that there was like no, there wasn't a wall that was reliable. So if you got shoved into the wall, likely you were taking that person down because there wasn't really people behind them. Either. Oh, there's no one to support you? <laughs> yeah, because it's like a big ballroom. It's And so, like, people are interspersed. So, like, there's, like, 50 people up at the stage and then, like, the, the other 30 are, like, around the back, like, near the bar and stuff, like normal. But normally there's, like, hundreds of people in there. So <laughs> it was it was very It's intense. like a tornado. I could just break out anywhere. Yeah, yeah, I've been to a lot of like local concerts um, growing up, and for, for like rock bands, and they were always really small, like no more than eighty people. There's, there's, it's doubtful there was ever a hundred people at a, at a local concert like that. And yeah. the mosh pits there were probably like some of the hardest hitting mosh pits I've ever been a part of because we're just a small town, you know, you got nothing to do, and there's a, you know, there's a music going on, and people are just going ham. Like I flipped a dude, <laughs> like he charged me, and I, and I just got underneath him and flipped him over my head. And that sounds you know, like I'm an pretty Ahmed. tall because I'm like six feet. <laughs> so that was a bit of a drop for this kid. That's how Zach and I became friends. I think he threw me to the ground, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> well, we were playing. Going back to being competitive, so we were playing this game called Flying. Oh yeah, Wars. good co-op story. And. uh you know, I like, you know, I get involved, you know, so what you do is uh, you have that we're in the sand, right? The sand pit and you got a flag post on either side and you got a, like this little Nerf football and you got to throw it at the at the post to knock it down. Right. And uh, I don't remember what exactly happened, but like I come around and I'm trying to distract Marco. Right. And I like scream like, Brah! and then he's just like, oh, and then like he comes up to me. And you go, he gets, I'm going to give it back. Yeah. I'm like, well, if you can do that shit to me, I'm going to do it to you. Yeah. And I'm so, the new employee. So yeah, this is like, this is like one of the first times we've ever met. Right. And, uh, he comes running at me and he, he gets all 
big in my face, like, brah, and I, like, just, like, huh, just, like, push him back, and, like, <laughs> like, what a punch, and he just, like, oh, flat on his back. I just started laughing right away. I'm like, this motherfucker. <laughs> well, he scared me, right? So, <laughs> you know, you know the flight or, fight, flight or fight response? I got no flight. It's always fight, you know, so it's, like, I'm I'm hitting back right away. You, know? you make me think of the guy like there's a, there's a famous video for me at least where he's like some dude comes up to a house where a guy's pretending to be a scarecrow for Halloween mm. and he jumps up to scare this big guy mm. and the guy you know it was just a response he was not expecting it because I mean that that elbow flies out instantly you know I mean just yeah, like, I'm not a lot of haunted houses I just throw punches. <laughs> <laughs> where did that come? I was gonna say something. Oh, uh, well, we derailed. It's not, yeah, it's okay. Um, I do it all the time. Um, Twilight of the Thunder God, the the Chain Brain guy. He so not only can you make charts that are you know just a straight rip of the song and then a tab basically on Rocksmith, but you can also make memes and stuff. So there was a so, there was Twilight of the Thunder God, but every time that the vocalist mentioned a Norse god, the song got like two percent faster. And I don't know if you are <laughs> cool. familiar with that song, but the chorus says a fucking ga- a name like every other sentence. Like so, and the and that riff is hard. That is not an easy riff to play. It's like skipping strings and alternate picking, and it's like oh my goodness. He's like he was like joking around at the beginning of the video, and about a minute in, he's just like sitting up straight and like actually trying to play the riff. He's like <laughs> I can't do this. This is this is hard. Get some fire in the flames fast style, right? Is that what you get? Yeah. I think he can play Dragon Force stuff too. I think one of the, uh, you know, uh, what is the name? Herman Lee. He's on Twitch also. He just gets on Twitch and just talks to people That's all cool. the time. That's cool. And he very regularly, like, like people will go into the Twitch and go in the chat and be like, "Hey, someone's, I like this guitar smith streamer. You should go and uh, just be in their chat." And one time he was Herman Lee went into Chain Brain's chat and he, and he was like, "I guess I have to play through the Fire and the Flames for him then, don't I?" You know what I mean? And just started playing it. <laughs> I was like, oh, that would, yeah, that's like a dream for me. It's yeah. like, cause I like to do singing and voice acting. So if I could get the attention of someone that, you know, not necessarily look up to, but I admire for yeah. their, yeah. No, I just admire for their skill. Like, I don't even, I don't even care if it brings connections or views. I mean, I, I like that, but, <laughs> you know, just to have their attention in general, like, you know, just to get any critique. Cause I, that's what matters more to me is like, feedback yeah improving on who you adulation were you know what i mean yeah. like i can get adulation not to sound cocky but <laughs> you know what i mean like most people i think are friendly they'll say something nice but yeah. right, i got another question round table right. send it out we'll start, we'll start with you phil okay um i guess what i mean is which game series now when i say game I, it can be board game it can be any game what game means to you but which game series do you wish would make a comeback and why oh man that's a good one <laughs> i have an immediate uh, answer all right <laughs> let's go to you nave while i think about mine if you have well, an uh, immediate answer i don't I, I i feel like i talk about the same like five things every couple of episodes but i want to bring up uh, tony hawk's pro skater oh, I mean, my oh, boy has been yeah. killed yeah. i'm so sad again yeah um well, those were the other games. Yeah, there hasn't been a good skating game since, like, Skate, you know? Yeah, and that's a completely different, like, territory, you know? Oh, yeah. And it's still very fun. I'm, I've am i been getting into them recently since they're on Xbox's backwards compatibility. I've been playing a lot of the first Skate, which is the most rough around the edges one. So I'm struggling with it a lot, but I feel like I need to beat it before I go to two. So. <laughs> oh, I get that. Um. Yeah, uh, what was the other game, Philip? In the same breath that I talk about, act is like, oh no, Yokai Watch Wibwob. No, that is my favorite game, though. I'm glad you brought that Say up. What? What? I um, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What you said Wib- Wib- it's yeah, a it was like a mobile recommend. game. That was like my first thought when you were like, a game needs to come back because it was a mobile game that I really enjoyed that got canceled because no one played it, but I played it. <laughs> But no, like just to break in while you try to remember that name, I would say just oh, a Silent Hero. Hero. Oh, Guitar Hero? Yeah. Yeah. Guitar Hero, bring it back. Bring some competition for Rocksmith, right? Rock Band. Rock Band <laughs> still around? Yeah, well, I no, feel like Rock, really. Band, Rock Band replaced Guitar Hero for me. 
It's just like a, an evolution. Well, it, it was, was an the evolution same developers that they had left that company. It was? Yeah, oh, that's and then right. They, yeah. they, they left that company and started their own. That's right. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, DreamWorks. I just felt like Disney. Rock Band was Guitar Hero plus other cool shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, what did, well, like, what do you got? I mean, what did guitar, what could Guitar Hero bring back or add that Rock Band isn't already doing? Well, they did the head-to-head competitions, right? Like uh, Guitar Hero did. That yeah. rock band never really did that. Okay. Yeah, they were in arcades too. So is that uh, it's a lot easier than Rock Band. Rock Band's hit windows are significantly shorter. Like if you if you watch any like Guitar Hero Twitch, like like a uh, Asai, like Philip knows Asai, but uh, oh, any yeah. Guitar Hero Twitch streamer, it's it's not they don't play Guitar Hero. They play Clone Hero, which is just the piece. It's just the same thing as rocksmith you get custom songs on the pc really easily you can do that with clone hero and it's literally just guitar hero 3 you know Mm. um it's the same engine as guitar hero 3 and he has streams occasionally where he puts custom dlc into rock band and he cannot physically play it he's like this is so hard all of a sudden like in on guitar hero he's just like tapping with his fuck both of his hands on the he has two hands at once it's classic (laughs) it's very it sounds like people who make maps for that what is that mario game that you can make your own mario levels oh man yeah oh, and they I just make this insane called. yeah super maps. mario maker yeah yeah that my some of my favorites are people just like give it to their three-year-old and like here and then you just get some map and then some pro mario player tries to survive it like how far <laughs> they can get so like, i guess i do watch some gaming yeah it has it to comes... have a purpose like i can't yeah. just watch someone just play something vanilla you know what i mean um i if, if actually... the only way i'd be able to do that is if i really significantly liked the game you know and it's like like if it's a game like spec ops the line where i want to see people react to specific story beats like i know this is going to crush him so i'm just going to oh. see him get to this point because <laughs> spec that's ops a line true is... reaction video mm, in my is. opinion because i can't yeah i can't oh, watch yeah. people watch like react like reaction videos or people react to reaction react, yeah that's very bizarre to me <laughs> that's a big thing on youtube though oh it's huge it's got its own niche. i mean we talked about maybe doing that yeah we talked yeah we talked about uh creating other maybe that's shows. our next episode we just do like a four-man reaction video yeah maybe it could be something <laughs> god I do, I do fall into that hole too, where I, I enjoy reaction videos. I used to be in the closet about it because it's such like easy content to make, so I was embarrassed <laughs> to yeah, say really. that I, I like watching it. But I especially love watching people who don't like metal listen to metal, especially if they do it for oh, a long a period time. of time, because you can see their transformation as they begin to like get acclimated to like aggressive styles of uh, vocal vocalists and like, and like that the nuances of instrumentation and stuff like people who listen to Mm -hmm. strictly hip-hop or like classical music like people like that i listen i listen to this one i can't remember his name because it's fucking gibberish but he's like an old composer and he listens to metal and he just breaks it down in a way that i would never have an ear for like just oh that's really cool he's just like he's like the way that the guitars go in and out right here i don't know what kind of and he's like just talking about stuff like that and i'm like this is the this is why i would watch uh like talking about like video. arpeggios and things like that yeah and he's like or he'll like t- specifically note on like the vocal performance like like using big scary words that i don't know but <laughs> is this like you're italian learning. metal opposed to the math metal you were talking about last time uh no but he does watch a, a, a few <laughs> math metal bands but not really like as far as he's the farthest he gets into that territory is Meshuga, which it, it, it's there he's listened to like clockworks and stuff and that sounds like fucking nonsense if you don't listen to metal <laughs> but he <laughs> that is like a uh an exercise just listening to that song like you'll start sweating is, about is math metal is that a genre yeah it's one of my he's trying to convince me it is but i'm not sure if i'm down with it yet it's car go listen to car bomb and tell me Carbon. that you can explain that in any other way than math metal, because it, it, there's no other way. Like it's the, metal like, for the universe. <laughs> like with with tempo changes and and uh, and uh, time signature shifts, like mid bar and stuff like that. The drummer, by the way, if you guys do end up listening to that, it's very hard to listen to the first couple times you listen to a song. 
when you're not used you said to it. It's called but... car smash. Car bomb. Car bomb. Car bomb. Car bomb. Right. So I no, I have a great appreciation appreciation for really any music as long as it's actually played. I mean, I'm not to put down like DJs or digital artists because I think they're excellent too. But that is is that an actual play? Like, are are the musicians playing that fast and that hard? Oh yeah. Well, it, it's not it's not particularly fast. It's that, but it's insanely difficult, especially if you. Oh, uh, okay. Like another band is Animals as Leaders. They're not really math metal, but they are progressive metal without a vocalist. But um, Car Bomb in particular, they are just constant. The the music is constantly moving. Like there's there's like an impo- it's like impossible challenge. Bob your head to Car Bomb and don't get on the offbeat. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's like the drummer doesn't have a clicker in his ear either. He like just is playing by feel. Like it's a huge thing during their live shows where if they screw up, it's just funny because it's just like I was gonna say, I would how do you keep up. time? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's impossible. Like you're listening and you're like, this isn't even music. This is borderline not music. <laughs> like it would sound <laughs> it like sounds like you're describing jazz. Hey, ooh, hey, ooh. <laughs> Tell us some I improv like metal. It's close. Well, like, yeah, there's that's what like, there is an imp, there's impro there's improv improvisation or just improvised um, what's the word I'm looking for shit improvised jazz but that is jazz so I don't know what that means it's kind of like lactose intolerant milk like <laughs> what are you drinking you know <laughs> but I like jazz I like I'll I'll listen to that I'll check it out because we thought about doing something in reverse of that idea because we've seen many guys like listen to like rap like uh, like rap fans listen to metal for the first time we thought. I'm like Zach. Why don't we just flip that? Why don't we just be because we're metal fans? Why don't yeah. we just listen to rap? Because I rarely, I rarely do. I mean, there. I find that the only rap songs I have, like on my Spotify favorite list, is like comical rap. Like if it makes me laugh. So it would be nice to actually listen to more because I'm sure. I, well, not. I know there's tons I haven't heard. Yeah, it's know? all about quality, right? If you have good quality music, it doesn't matter the genre. That's that's so, the key. So you're a big fan of Doctor Octagon, then. Doctor, I don't even know Doctor Octagon. <laughs> no, but nobody knows who Doctor Octagon is. I learned him from a podcast years ago, or maybe it was not even that long ago. But I, I always show somebody this. There's a song called "Half Shark, Half Alligator Man" or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you linked that to me one day. I'm just like, that sounds familiar. <laughs> sounds like something you would say. Yes, it's not, yes, it's it's not that great. <laughs> the chorus is just like half shock alligator half man and it's just like it's like made in like the 80s i think it's very oh no you're selling me pretty good that sounds fun (laughs) yeah close my eyes watch my brain glow (laughs) and i'm just like i fucking love this song so much i don't know what it is but every time i show it to someone they're just like i don't get it man like but i also do that to people all the time i'll show people car bomb just with no context and they're just like what is this? This, oh. this doesn't sound like music to me. I used to get songs taken off of, like, you know, the digital jukebox that bars have and stuff. Mm, so yeah. you just, like, you know, use yeah. your phone app, or whatever, to play a song. Uh, so I would go in there and put on, like, Lords of Acid and just be, like, young boys. You know, if you've never heard of Lords of Acid, so just, like, really offensive lyrics. Like, just fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'd yeah. always be surprised <laughs> if that was on the playlist. And then they would play the album bar. Because I just want to see people laugh. I don't think I've ever saw anybody actually get offended. But, of course, the bar, they're like, oh, no, no. We can't have that. Yeah. <laughs> this is a nice establishment. <laughs> it's yeah, a family right. environment. Yeah, right. <laughs> At the bar. <laughs> All right, so, Phil, did you think about which series – which game series you'd like to see make a comeback? Yeah, Yokai Wibwabs aside, I would have to go with the Silent Hill. Like I know we ha- they teased PT a couple of years back, or the, mm. but nothing's come of that since. And I know, like apparently, some of the developers or the lead developer or something like that went to work on, uh, what was that other game that we talked about last week? It's like Dead Inside or Dying, Dead, Dead by Dying, Dead by Daylight. No, it's not that uh, one. Oh, that's when we were trying to talk. Oh, we were thinking about that earlier, Dead by Daylight. Sorry. Yeah. Anyways, dying Light? Dying Light? That sounds like it. What Maybe describes oh, that's another world. game. Yeah. A, that's a good yeah, one. You named two different games. Yeah. But that has oh, a sequel yeah. coming out. It, it, well, it should be pretty soon. I don't remember. I got delayed. Yes, yeah, so you can't that. choose that. That's not, okay. a, that's not a dead well, or, no. or... Well, I mean, Silent Hill as a series. Like, Silent Hill always has yeah. a special yeah. place in my heart. Since play, like, I played through like one through three watched all the movies like uh whenever we first like adopted my 13 year old daughter she was like I oh dad in my you want to watch a scary movie and i'm like yeah and she's like well what movie do you want to watch and i'm like the only good scary movie i actually like let's watch some silent hill because like mm-hmm. i'm not overly into like crazy gore like i know you guys talk about gore on your show 
or uh, just like B trash horror movies. Like yes. you talk about Thanks Killing. I think in one episode I was listening to earlier today, and as someone that's seen Thanks Killing, I know it's not <laughs> it's not a good movie. Oh, yeah. you I through love it though. It, though. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's the best opener though. How many movies open like that? But just flopping, flopping yeah. extremities. All right, so. Yeah, so I definitely prefer the more overall tone or feel that they put in the Silent Hill movies. Like, they definitely tried to make that more mainstream opposed to the, like, I don't want to say lower, but, like, you know, the main horror crowd. They tried to definitely... like the Hollywood treatment. Yeah, I like, I like the that. popular horror movies, if you, if I could say that, and I'll be booed off the stage. But definitely Silent Hill hits a, a, a good vein in me. So you think the movie... What's your opinion? I'm curious of the movies compared to the games. You think that they did it justice? Yeah. Oh man. Like no. Well, yeah. Okay. They did good enough. I'll put it as that. Like there's still room to have a better experience with Silent Hill. I feel like it would have to be definitely like a mini series or even like, I don't want to say animated because like they could do so much with the effects and props that I would love to see it more live action, but I just love the setting that is Silent Hill. It I just is incredibly started- creepy keeping a notepad open because i we are like hit like i would just be like oh fuck i want to talk about this i want to talk about this i want to talk about this and now i'm just like got a notepad just trying to keep everything in line that's why i um, even told i've said this to zach before it's like it's like only three questions like yeah that's solid (laughs) (laughs) if we get to the third um so uh, what do i which one of these do i want to i don't know if you guys noticed but i actually put this sharpie in my mouth like (laughs) I didn't. I was. I don't even it's know. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can do it. Do you do you, man? But um, yeah, delicious. Uh, have so have you guys a horror movie or the band? Shit. Let's go with the horror movie. Have you guys seen Tucker da- Tucker and Dale versus Evil? Yes. Yeah, that's a great one. I like that one a lot. That was a surprise hit. If you want to say. Yeah, I was surprised how popular yeah. it got and how mainstream it was. I, I I enjoyed it a lot actually. It was hilarious. It's rare that comedy in a horror movie actually you know, hits the right notes for me. They're really? usually just too campy. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I, I like. Like, all no, zombies, yeah. you know? All zombies is very... Is like, very... it actually made me laugh out loud, though. Like, I was laughing, too. Like, I thought... I felt more like it was a comedy, which is a little dark, but it was really yeah. more of a comedy than a horror for me. I would definitely classify it as, like, an anti-horror movie because it's, oh, like... Oh, it is, yeah. It, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't really want to spoil the surprise for people, but go watch that movie. I am very anti-horror, I just I have a really hard time empathizing with people like in horror movies. I just I feel the need to not nitpick, but like poke fun at everything like, as yeah. maybe a way of coping with my I do cope with humor all the time. So maybe I'm just getting up, upset at what's on the screen and just I just have to cope by making fun of it so that I don't feel bad or something. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. No, that makes sense. But um, I do it to video horror video games, too. Oh, shit. I should talk about that, too. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, a friend came to me and he was like, "We have to watch Tucker and Dale versus Evil. It's it's a horror movie." And I was like, "I don't want to, you know, I don't want to watch a horror movie." Like my, I have very passionate friends who love horror movies, and they can't take a horror movie seriously with me sitting next to them because I'll just be making fun of the movie the whole time. I can't help myself. And um, so I'm like, I don't, I don't like watching horror movies with my friends because I feel like I'm, I'm ruining the experience. So I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to watch that. And he's like, no, trust me, man, you're going to like this one. You, you sit down and you watch this movie with me. And it's, it's, it's awesome. It's a very good movie. Yeah. I, they, they should make more. That's that, re, that movie reminds me of, um, I want to say it was like in the nineties when they were making lots of like parody movies, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like mm. Mel Brooks was kind of like the weird Al of movies if you're, or vice versa, if you want to, you know, coin that. But I, I miss those. I miss, I miss Hollywood making fun of itself. And you really don't see that anymore. I don't, at least I don't. I can't think yeah, of anything. Yeah, it's been a long time since there's been like a scary movie, uh, you know, right. title. That was good movie. too. Like yeah. it was watchable. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. The first couple, then it got it got pretty extreme. It was really big in like the 2000s, like Meet the Spartans, and that's when uh, it kind of ended for me. Because then it was when that what got bad or just sort of became yeah. They like got popular. they got they they took it overboard. Is what yeah. I'm saying. They're, but like. There's a lot of like uh, satire films like that back in like the early 2000s, late 90s for sure, and then they just kind of like petered out. Well, have I you guys... definitely, wa- I definitely quote Meet the Spartans quite often. I don't know why. Like there are a couple of lines in that movie that for some reason just jump into my to the front of my 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 fucking brain whenever I'm talking to someone. I think uh, 
what is it? Uh, there's a part where they're like high fives for the women. And open mouth tongue kisses for the men. And I think about that all the time. I always <laughs> say that on Twitter. And I feel like no one ever knows what I'm talking about. I would never get that. Yeah, I know. I lose that one. Yeah. Like, all right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, only recently have I found a gif of that part, of that part, of just him saying open mouth tongue kisses for the men. So it's like, okay, well, now I don't look like a freaking sociopath, <laughs> at least. <laughs> They're like, oh, That's this great. is clearly a reference to something. All right. Oh, well, I was just going to say, uh, do you guys have any experience with, like, the more satire games? Like, we just got done doing, like, I say just got done, it was like a month ago. We did Saints Row the Fourth, right? Or four. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's just a Mass Effect ma Matrix riff, the whole game. And I didn't know it was, like, a satire game whenever I went into it. So that was just, like, mind-blowing for me. I that think was actually my favorite Saints Row. Yeah, that's my favorite one, I think. Because my brother, that was like one of the last times my brother and I did like a co couch co op. We we because you can make your character look however you want. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing like movie characters like Terminator, you know, like different versions of the Terminator and stuff like that. Or Stallone and you know Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think I was completely nude except I had a George W. Bush mask on. <laughs> I was running around like that. <laughs> Dead Presidents, the remake. Yeah. God, Philip hated it. Yeah. Well, I, think I, I don't think. Like, also. I had to explain it every time my eight-year-old daughter walked in the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why your character was wielding a three-foot dildo? Yeah, I was just seeing this. <laughs> yeah. It's just a rubber bat, honey. It's Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, um, let me see what else I got on here. All right. So, do you guys are you guys familiar with a band called Infant Annihilator? It sounds familiar, but I'm not familiar no, with it. No, I haven't. It's very so. You guys were talking about like gore and blood and stuff, and I think at some point you mentioned music again. Like this is when it popped up in my head. It was just, I'm pulling from from deep in the conversation now. But um, All right. uh, this band, Infinite Annihilator, as you can tell from the name itself, uh, it's like basically a slasher a slasher flick of metal. Like it is a parody band, like kind of like Spinal Tap. But it is it, it is parody in the opposite direction of Spinal Tap, where it's not trying to be funny. It is being, it, they are doing it tongue in cheek, but they are making it as outrageous and and horrible as they possibly can. Horrible as in the vocalist sounds like a a animal being tortured, and <laughs> there are lyrics. I swear, like if you listen hard enough, you will catch a couple of words, but you don't want to catch the words because the lyrics are absolutely a like abhorrent like i feel oh, bad interested. when i listen to some songs okay this is the worst one probably just because of the subject matter i'm not going to talk about it but um look up <laughs> the lyrics for a song called swine ecologist and hmm. not but and the instrumentation is incredibly it is incredible these guys are ridiculous or if you want to see because the drummer it sounds like a drum machine it sounds like the drummer is not real but um, you can watch the drummer. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he does a playthrough of uh, a song called Cunt Crusher. And um, it, it, even when you're watching it, it doesn't look real. You're just like, this guy is a machine. And uh, like he does this specific thing, I think about two minutes in. It's called the gravity, a gravity blast. Gravity, I think it's called a gravity blast, where you put this, this, the drumstick. This is going to be bad for the audio version of the podcast <laughs> you put the drumstick like up against the rim of the snare and then you pull it up and in the action of pulling it up it makes the tip of the drum stick go down and hit the drum now as you're pulling it up you keep pulling it up hard so that it bounces off of the drum head and then hits the drum head again and you can get two or three different hits if you're doing it hard enough and fast enough, and if you do it at a steady rhythm, you'll go, it'll go pop, 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 you know, you could go really fast with one hand, and it does not look real at all. It's I'm almost more impressed. I think I often am more impressed by an insanely good drummer than a guitarist because it's just crazy. There's drum competitions that's just made me think of what that description is like. I don't know what they call, but it's like a drum off. You know, they just have like drummers on stage. Sometimes, you know, back and forth, they toss it or they just go up one at a time and they just they're insane drummers. And I never know who they are, but it's just mind blowing how good they are. That's what I was Dinosaur. saying. Though. Yeah, the uh, the horror of the horror of metal. Yes. 
Someone is yes. blowing my Discord up. It is hard to think when that's happening. Let Sorry, I turned off Discord because it was booping. So you might want to cut this out. But I said the reason I said dinosaur is that's our like uh, word for cut. It just means yeah. if you hear dinosaur just randomly set into the uh, feed, <laughs> that we know. That's oh, a good idea. Whatever, whatever's after dinosaur is garbage. So yeah, we need to do that dinosaur. because. Me and Philip have just gotten into the habit of just repeating sentences. I probably have done it like a hundred times this, so far. Like I'll I'll be like in the middle of a sentence, and I'll go and just restart the sentence. And sometimes we leave it in on accident. And I'm just like ah. Gotcha. My favorite part oh, is to good. say, "Nave, cut that," and then leave it in because I'm the yeah. one doing the editing that week. <laughs> and like I guess Nave left it in. Yeah, and he caught like right at the beginning of what is it two episodes ago? You caught me in a point where I was like. I was like, okay, I'm explaining to the guest. I'm like, hey, we're going to edit this so that just so it's not dead air. I think I was Googling something. And then Philip left that part in. And then I restarted. I was like, oh, yeah. So as if it was before, but he left that all that in. <laughs> oh, no. so yeah. It was clearly it's fake. So fake. I was like, oh, yeah, Philip, we've, I we've had you. instances like that before. But, you know, we're all learning. We're all getting used to this thing. Oh, no, we're not. It's intentional. Usually I see those parts and I'm like, I'm definitely leaving this in. Yeah, I mean, some things like, I mean, Joe, how, how much editing does Joe Rogan do? Some guys seem like they just leave most shit in, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, well, I oh, think wait, after, there'll be some dead air. I think after doing it for so long, like, you just kind of get really proficient at it. Because I remember at the beginning, sure. I on the for the first, like, 10 or 15 episodes even, I was editing hardcore. Like, it would take me, like, days to get done with the edit with my sanity intact. And I'm mm. definitely leaving in like large swaths of like like minutes to like maybe ten or ten or fifteen minutes straight of no edit at all. Like I was like, this just sounds fine. You know what I mean? Before, where before yeah, yeah. we would be screwing it up and like having a hard time talking. It's really hard to get used to talking, like being aware that you're being recorded and also trying to have a natural conversation. That take that took a while. Oh, absolutely. Especially if you, I mean, when I go back and listen to like our, at least our first, at least our first 10 episodes, I hate them. I cannot stand having to listen to if I go back for reference or whatever. And like, while I'm editing and it, yeah. it's just so rough because it, that's so <laughs> clear. It's so obvious in the way we're speaking. You know, I even sound almost like I'm announcing, you know, like I'm trying to be the weatherman or something. You know, it's like, so Zach, well, what do you think about it? You know, it's just like a character. It's not real. Yeah. So, no, I totally get that. I agree. You know, where were we? And dinosaur. Um, so, <laughs> so oh, uh, if you guys um, want to uh, talk about your, kind of your revival series, do you guys want to pull back to that? Wait, Philip. What? It's over an hour in and we didn't take a single break yet. Uh, we'll fix it in post. Okay. Go for it. Do that then. I mean, if you ask me, that is exactly what makes Dune Dudes, mm -hmm. Dune Dudes. Our shtick is that we don't have a shtick. We're just like yeah. two idiots. I like to think that our charm, I, I feel like a lot of podcasts, it's like, oh, like, is Dune confusing for you? Well, I'm a Dune expert. I've read through Dune yeah. 20 times, and I'm going to make this, like, more simple for you to parse out and understand. But our thing is, like, we don't know either. We probably will not help you understand Dune better. But if you want to come along for the ride with someone who doesn't know yep. jack shit either, and you figure it out together, yep. that's what I think we offer. We, we might even confuse you even more. And at other points, we might make you think of something in a way that you had not thought of it before or in a stupid funny way i think you're right i think that is our charm dune dudes a podcast about dune for dudes of all kinds hey everybody and welcome to your favorite show about classic cartoons from the 80s and 90s it's knowing is half the podcast Join Ray Stacanus. Hi. Robert Clark Chan. Ugh. And me, Gina Ippolito, as we explore the worst and the best, but mostly the worst, that children's animation has to offer. Now, I know what you're thinking, but why would I, a grown-ass adult, want to revisit my childhood during this time of strife and turmoil when everything is literally on fire? Uh, hey, isn't this going to sound kind of dated and weird when the world actually calms down? <laughs> We're all gonna die. We've got nearly 500 episodes covering everything from the awesomeness of the entire 80s Sunbow series G.I. Joe to the weirdness of Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue to the weirdness of Hey Arnold to the weirdness of Chuck Norris and the Karate Commando. Okay, Gina, they get it. They spelled commandos with a K. Knowing is half the podcast. Find it on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. If it was in your butt, you'd know. Is there a tagline? All right. What were you going to say? 
Uh, if you guys want to mention uh, your revival series, if you had one in mind. When uh, I was younger, you know, we were talking about how we first got into video games. I uh, started with the NES, uh, you know, or, or Atari, and then went to Super Nintendo, and then PlayStation. Well, I played video games a lot. So I got to God of War and Prince of Persia. Now they've redone God of War and they've continued that, which is nice. And uh, I would really like to see them do a Prince of Persia revival because those are the two games that made me want to create video games and like go into the industry. I actually went to school for media arts animation. Turned out they were a fraud. So my degree is a little garbage, but I learned some things, but mostly garbage. But um, uh, shout out to <laughs> Art Institute of Schomburg, you know, <laughs> just destroying lives out here, but that's okay. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd like to see Prince of Persia re- just kind of get a revival and done right because they did a second like little. Uh, they did a different character, and I don't, it was it, it totally took away from the theme. You could not die. It was literally impossible for you to die in that game. Every time you would fall off a cliff, you're like this like girl would either save you or like your shadow would save you. I'm like this is ridiculous. This is the dumbest thing. It was so boring. It, the The idea of controlling the elements for it was kind of interesting, but yeah, I'd really like them to see to go back to the original three kind of style, going back in that and more puzzles and stuff like that. I really enjoyed the that game. That's the stories were great. Everything about it, like your your inner turmoil and everything. Yeah, Prince of Persia is kind of like the heavy metal version of Aladdin, and that's yeah, why I like yeah, it. it was. It's very. It's kind of dark, and I like like grim, dark stuff. Just it, about any series. And it I only love. got darker, right? Yeah. Like the first one was pretty tame, and by the third one, it literally has heavy metal like as its like game music. Oh, I'd forgotten that, dude. Yeah. It's intense. No, I agree with like, especially because you mentioned puzzles. For me, it's similar. I love the. I already mentioned it, but again, vampires. Uh, the Legacy of Kane series uh, is probably right up there for me with like Castlevania. So I'm always waiting for Castlevania. Castlevania makes comebacks, uh, but Legacy of Cain has been dead in the water. Uh, and the last game that they had officially was uh, Nosgoth, which was a competitive team-based mm. PvP game, Vampires versus Slayers. And they took it off of Steam. They canceled it, which is sad because it was excellent. Uh, and I think there was another, uh, or like not a remake, but a restart to the series. I think it was called Dead Sun. And it's it's a really unfortunate story with that because that game got to like the finish line of game completion and they canceled the project. And sadly, that happens with a lot of games I came to find out because I've ever since I've started like researching the gaming industry more. I hate it. I, I started with it started as a dislike and I just absolutely hated it. It is one of the most I'm OK with competition. I like competition, but it is so it's so corrupt and toxic. And I think we even talked about that before but legacy of kane for me is a series i hope makes a comeback because the storytelling was uh it's just unmatched there's few games i can think of that tell a story as complex intricate and clever you know as as the gameplay matched that as well it was the gameplay was puzzles it was thinking it was action it was uh it was a drama you know it was very well done i don't know i'm just gloating but that's that's my pick (laughs) I mean, kind of every time you bring it up and the way that you talk about it, it really makes me want to push Spec Ops the line on you guys, like really hard. Well, you play LOK and I'll play Spec Ops the line. How about that? I think I did play uh, Legacy of Kane as a kid. Um, the first I one. Didn't, I did, yeah, the first one on the PS One. But uh, I didn't mm-hmm. understand what I was looking at. You know, I didn't under like at that point in my life, I had just experienced Final Fantasy VIII. Like, mm-hmm. not not a lot, but I was very young when these games were out. So it was like, uh, I was kind of wandering through these games and not being able to clearly articulate what I liked and what I didn't like. I kind of probably, sure. inter- like, that probably contributes to, like, how eclectic I am with everything I do. Like, my video games and my music, I, like, it's just a wide net, kind of. Um, Spec Ops The Line, though, is, like, it's a little less pertinent now, but back in its time in the 360 generation, there were a ton of like grizzled uh, m- modern war video games, like shooters with a grizzled man disheveled with armor and with Gears his gun. Of war. Yeah, like just standing on the cover. You know, you see like a hundred of them lined up in a GameStop or something like that. Those uh, that game was a very harsh critique 
on the not just the gaming industry itself but also like the t the type of person who you have to be to enjoy what is actually happening on the screen like in regards to like the the morality of like gunning down tons of people like what that does to a person like and the 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 story like the twists that happen are very dramatic and um uh, it's it's inspired by okay this might give it away i'm not going to spoil the game but the game is inspired by heart of darkness the novella and uh -huh. if you're familiar with heart of darkness then that will probably give away the game if not then I that's think I, yeah if not then that's good because that you that means nothing to you but um heart of darkness is also incredibly great if you haven't read that it's a very short story and uh reading through that it 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 definitely changes the way I think about some some things that just change the way you think about things. Oh no, I agree, and and I have read Heart of Darkness, and I'm also a big uh, Clive Barker fan. So um, if you read anything Clive Barker, it's very similar. So yeah, I, I see where you're going with that, but that won't that won't put me off from trying it. I mean, I spec ops the line, I'll check it out. You know for sure. I think it is. is there... I don't know if you guys play on the three on the Xbox. But, um, I didn't know. It's funny when you mentioned the Xbox. Uh, I was, I still am anti Microsoft. Um, it doesn't matter. But I never had an Xbox or wanted to really buy one. But I do remember going into looking at like even the Best Buy. All the all the Xbox games were like that. They looked like a like a poster for you know, a, you know like American Army recruitment or Join something. Now. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Join now. Yeah, it was very much like that, which is cool. But I I never. I think I played Gears of War in like Call of Duty on Friends system or something. You know, I never actually owned it. That's interesting you meant because I I like uh, I do like I I'm picky about political statements in video games, but I do I do like a neutral not a neutral stance, but maybe uh, a neutral approach to like you said the morality because Metal Gear, for example, is very good. If you've ever played the Metal Gear games, uh, they do it the best. And it, I would even say that Metal mm. Gear is like a prophecy for what the world is going through right now, what modern warfare means. We won't touch on that, but play Metal Gear. Um, but no, go ahead if you were going to say something. I have more questions if we get to them. The, um, the thing about Spec Ops The Line, like, especially with morality, like, I'm, I'm, there's a fucking Band-Aid that you have to rip off very early on in the game. That's like a make or break for, uh, for a, a, a percentage of people. I think it was a pretty vocal minority, but the enemy you're fighting you are killing hundreds of american soldiers so that is hard for some people like mm -hmm. even if it's a video game if you can't disassociate from that but at the same time the game itself is like look at what you're doing look at who that is you know what i mean it's like it's real this i can't it's hard i have to I walk on eggshells talking about it but it's no, I like that. It has a. It sounds like it has a narrative that makes you think. So the 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 team. I don't know how the team snuck this past the fucking goalie because this was a, a, this was a budget game. Like like this is a big budget game from a. I don't know if they like lied to their publishers. Like this is a military shooter. Like Call mm -hmm. of Duty. Like if Call of Duty can do no Russian, I, you can do like anything. It seems anymore. I don't know. I think no. There's nothing like no Russian in any of the call of duties afterwards well, like yeah. they did that no russian and then they were like oh that was uh like they, they it was very shocking and that was actually a very important moment in video gaming history the no russian uh video the no no russian thing you guys are familiar right i'm not actually about to ask uh i'm not at least no, not either am i all right it's been a couple you, years since i've played but I've, i played it just recently okay you go um, and explain it then it's not super important, like the storyline, but your character is like undercover with a like a terrorist cell, and what oh, okay. they're go what they're what doing is uh, they go to an airport and they gun down like hundreds of civilians, and you at the end like you just walking through this airport just killing unarmed people, and um, at the very end your character gets shot and then because they know you're a, a they know you're in the military i don't remember who he is but uh and then it starts an international fucking thing because like there's an american here like with body armor 
after this tragedy. And um, obviously, for obvious reasons, that was incredibly divisive. That was a level that they had to put a patch in that said, this is going to happen in the story. Do you want to skip this level? You know what I mean? Like, Interesting. You don't have to play it. I can respect the fact that they put an option in. I would be upset if it was blocked. You know what I mean? Like yeah, if, definitely. If, yeah. Because yeah. that's what bothers me uh, with anything uh, is I would call that propaganda. Yeah, but then why not just skip any level that's difficult for you? You know, that's why I, it comes to me. It's like, yeah, let's just make a button that completes the entire game. You know, some games like, do that. <laughs> yeah, that's also really. That's a. Do you like that? No, I don't. Yeah, but so. I, I can, I can, I can live with it if it's there. If I can skip past it, it's fine. If it's blocked for me, then yeah, I well, have that's a problem. that's a problem. Yeah, I just find it a moral gray zone when you start giving people options to to skip levels. I think I don't know. I think that's kind of weird. Well, one thing I do want to highlight is you can actually play through the whole level without shooting any civilians. If I was going to take that from you, Nate. Oh, that's so. So you can literally like you can just witness what's happening in the incident because you as like you as a player don't know the full story at this point. It's just a cold open. But as like the the character, you can say this is what the character would do in the situation if you were role playing as an American Mm -hmm. that is in a terrorist cell and is basically like. If I don't go with these guys, they're going to know I'm a I'm an informant and they're going to kill me. You know, and he, that is really interesting. Yeah, that is super interesting because that makes me think of uh, one of my favorite games of all time is Dragon's Dogma. And I love clever shit like that in a video game where you actually make a real moral choice that has an effect on the gameplay. But the fact that you actually made that moral choice, and that's a really good point. It's like, why did you shoot? anyone anyway who made you kill all those people in the airport and in dragon's dogma there's a scene where you're hiding the princess just to set it up real quick the princess is in love with your character and you're in her room but then the king is coming so you hide right and it's not like comical it's like you met you're meeting her there for political reasons so you while you're in the room hidden the king is sort of like possessed and he's 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 about to do something he can't stand to do it's like if you watched invincible when the dad yeah. turns on his team members right so you don't know what's about to happen as the player and then out of nowhere and it's so well done that it's like it's disturbing like it, it offends me like i hate violence against women that's just something maybe it's the way i was raised but i really hated it it's a trigger for me so immediately i'm like i'm pissed off that this king is like struggling his own wife but there was something dark on the dark side of my brain the devil on my shoulder was like well, wait a minute. Why? This is the king. Why are you going to get involved right now with what's going on? What does she mean to you? She means nothing to you. You don't even know why he's, you know, he's strangling her. Like all these thoughts were flying through my head. Mm. And then it occurred to me that I really was on a time limit here. The game wasn't waiting for me to make a decision. She was dying. And if I, you know, there wasn't press A and, and then it resets and you have to save her kind of thing. If you don't okay. save her, she dies in the story. And I, those kinds of things, like I really liked that. That, that to me, is excellent writing that's excellent storytelling so that's really interesting i'd never heard about that no russian thing but that's a really good question you asked it's like well or that you brought up like yeah you, you don't have to kill everyone yeah you know that's I actually like that. incredibly important for spec ops the line because now like i said that's the only time in all of call of duty which is a yearly franchise where there's something like as significant as that um Spec Ops The Line has about four or five different moments throughout the sprinkled throughout the game where there are choices, but they aren't explicitly told to you. Like, there is a specific scene where there are two people that are hung up by their wrists, and you're talking to someone, like a rebel leader. I can't, I can't explain who it is, but because it'll just give shit away. But um, you're talking to them, and they're like... This person on the left stole water, which is a capital offense in Dubai. By the way, the whole game is set in Dubai, and it basically a giant sandstorm completely annihilated the the uh, the city, and so it just completely broke out into chaos. And uh, the American military went in to stop like the chaos, but uh, the it's like they defected essentially. Like they're like, oh wait, we're kings here, you know what I mean? So they just took over the town. And but no one knows because they went radio silent, so no one knows what the hell happened. So like you're a, you're a small squad sent in to figure out what the hell happened, and so you are uh, the guys that are hung up uh, from a street sign, like by their wrists, and 
is like this guy on the left stole water. That's a capital offense. This guy on the right, you know, killed his family looking for him, right? It, but uh, like a, he's like a, uh, I was gonna say terrorist, but that's not right. Uh, what is it? A insurgent? A military guy that from Dubai? I don't know. A soldier. That's what I'm gotcha. looking for. <laughs> God. But um, he's a soldier, and he's like, you can kill the soldier and get set this guy free who was just getting water for his family, who's now dead, or you can shoot the guy for taking the water because he knew the punishment for stealing water. Now, you don't have to do those things. You can walk away. It's like, if you don't shoot them, we'll kill them both. Okay, you can walk away. Well, if you, you can shoot the ropes on their hands. And then there are snipers all around, and they'll try and shoot them, but you can try and save them. Or you can shoot the snipers, and it turns into a whole firefight. Like, there are mul there's another thing where there's a guy basically getting lynched, and y there's a huge crowd. And as soon as you go in and try and save them, they turn on you and tr attempt to attack you. And it's like, your, your teammate's like, what do we do? You know, like, do, do we fire on them? Like, they're going to kill us. Like, they're killing this guy. And then uh, you can fire in the air, and they'll disperse. Like, and your team, your co-op part, your I mean, not your co-op partner, but your uh, your AI. partner, your AI yeah. companion, will also start shooting in the air and screaming at them, telling them to get that's the hell clever. away. That's yeah. clever. Like, that's cool. Wow, that's really that's really cool. I've never heard of that one. I I'm a fucking I'm like a Jehovah's Witness when it comes to some games. Like <laughs> I will just push them on you until until you kick me off of your doorstep. All right. Well, I feel like we've actually been going a pretty good amount of time, about an hour 30 at this point. So is there anything you guys want to hit on before we start closing it out? I got one fun question I Ooh. wanted to ask. Perfect. Maybe because I'm, I want to give my answer, but I want to hear <laughs> yours first. Um, if you had to spend the rest of your life in a game world, any game world, which would it be and why? And be honest All right. about your reasoning. I'll let you go first on this one, actually, since you're so ready, and they'll give us time to no, think. No, no, no. Mine has to be last. Oh, okay. It's crass. It's crass. It's no. not as interesting. <laughs> go ahead, Zach. Oh, me? All right. I'm trying to think. All right, so am I a normie, or am I, like, a main character, right? No, no, That's it's smart. you. Oh, this it's is Zach. Personally. Zach has to live in, like, a Matrix style. You're going to be trapped in this game world. Oh. And you can attribute some new rules of, let's say, physics and reality but the theme and the the setting can't change you know maybe like a like a star wars kind of game right where where the whole universe is my oyster where i can go anywhere and do anything be any kind of there's so many opportunities in that kind of world you could be a smuggler you can do whatever you know you see the worlds that'd be cool I, I don't know. God of War would be cool to be Well, some things you have to consider, yeah. too. So, part, okay, here's a here's another caveat I'll add, I, and I intended, is that, um, so, like, if there's any tropes to this this game world, they're going to exist for you there as well. So, like, if if one of the tropes is uh, comedy sidekicks often die and because they're not important characters, mm. so then if you end up being one, then you, you run the risk of being... So killed. don't don't wear a red shirt. Yeah, like yeah, like that kind of shit. Right. So like if you go into Star Trek and you're a red shirt, right? That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, I'm thinking. So, it's, it's, I, I'm you have thinking to consider Star that as well. War. I think in Star Wars, like a Star Wars like type game, like universe place would be good. Because yeah, you know, I can get some crystals. You know, a universe in constant war. They're not always in. I mean, what there isn't. Where isn't there? It's called Star kind of Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. That's fine. That's you know, cool. There, there's, 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 already war. there's plenty of profit in war. I'll make my money. <laughs> All right, Phil, what about you? All right. Whenever I first heard Zach's answer, I definitely thought, oh, yeah, I want to be like Mass Effect or something because they got those mm -hmm. like futuristic cities. I bet healthcare mm -hmm. is great. It looks like they seem a very um, spread the wealth kind of uh, culture. But then I thought about it and so many of the humans we encounter in Mass Effect, if they're not living on the Citadel, they are like scrounging it as um, what's it called? Uh, settlers, settlers on like these pretty trash looking planets. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah. wait, hold on. So you're either like lucky and living in a Citadel or you're a peasant. And so I'm like, maybe not that. So what I ended up falling back on is maybe like, one of the final fantasy like newer universes because those like if i just look at the average commoner 
that isn't a spiky haired anime boy. Like they got it going pretty good. And I'm already like military. And in my experience for 90% of the games, the military people with the helmets on, they got some pretty good lives going on. They got like the coolest That's like true. cars. They got giant hover magic tanks. They got monsters working for them. Like I'd probably be on the wrong side of history, but it would still be fun for a while. <laughs> but they also don't you're right like you just you actually accidentally touched on something there's no hobos anymore in final fantasy games like that was they had kind of a thing like that there were different like class of characters like in the older games yeah. okay but i don't see that anymore in the modern no hmm. in the newer ones it's like pure fantasy intentional. everyone has a house yeah, everything's clean yeah yeah like anything after the yeah, playstation 2 era sorry. all right nate what about you <laughs> You definitely touched on the two that I was immediately thinking about, and the whole time I got to hear like the arguments, I'm like, the first thing I thought of was Mass Effect because it's like if I want to live, that's just future now, yeah, right? Like that's just a normal, and I'm like, okay, that seems like a cop out because then I could just say like, I don't know, L.A. Noir, you know? I'm like just in the real world, just a regular person, just somewhere else. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, but you're living in like a noir type universe, though. You know, like I said, there's always a constant mystery. Cliche yeah. racism. Yeah. Cliche. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of celebrity cameos. Yeah. You get a lot of time to think if someone's lying to you or not, though. So <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. Then you're like, doubt. The thing, the thing that ended up falling in my lap, and this also seems like a cop out, but um, because I, I've been I'm go, I, the whole time I was going through my games, I like I was blanking so hard, and I'm like, maybe something like Stardew Valley, <laughs> like if I just that's, oh, that's just really being chill. On a farm, you know, like I'm like, there's no danger there unless you go in the cave willingly. <laughs> that's the, probably the most survivable situation. It's just it is, and everyone just seems to be nice. I feel like I could be homeless there, just like begging for food. I think you could hang out with a homeless guy, anyways. He's already there. His yeah, like, yeah, yeah he he celebrate his birthday, even, so yeah. you're good. <laughs> the one I guy. You just feed him uh, trash every time yeah. you walk by I on your way to the mines. Maybe I mean, the outer worlds. Well, outer that's pretty worlds. crazy. That would be a really crazy place to live. Yeah, yeah, but that worlds. Like, so you want the constant danger. Well, the thing is, is that your character is in dangerous situations, but I'm sure that there are planets that are like completely civilized. The problem with that game is that it seems like the corporations completely took over, and that's something that makes me very uneasy. And I'm kind of a rabble rouser, so it's like. I don't think my social credit score would be very high in the, in the <laughs> Outer Worlds uh, universe. But, um, I mean, yeah. Uh, I'm going to stay with Stardew Valley. That seems chill enough. Yeah, it's a good pick. All right. So, Those are all way more different than mine. So yeah. I actually think y'all's show's pretty dangerous. Y'all went pretty dangerous on me because I feel like those are all even Stardew Valley. It's like you said, you go in the cave, or what if it rains on your farm? Like you run out of food. I don't know. Maybe I'm just dumb. But for me, I chose dead or alive volleyball. Like I just want to be on the beach <laughs> surrounded by jiggly women playing volleyball. And that's just the, the rest of my existence. The sunburns are terrible. Back. But yeah, it's nonstop. There's no night. I don't know if they have a night level. So it just be nonstop sun. All right, so I get a little skin cancer. I'm not going to be shot at by aliens. I don't have to worry about political warfare or the trade negotiations. See, now I'm just picking on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just went no, all in. Cool. That's so interesting. Should have just went for Fatal Frame or something horrible. <laughs> like, just like, yeah, so yeah I was like, it's definitely poison. not Silent Hill. <laughs> we go into oh, Quake. Man, Doom Eternal. <laughs> yeah, man. Ooh, Quake. We oh, did a whole episode terrible. on Quake. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's an exciting That's existence. Yeah. <laughs> and everything's like a biomechanical nightmare. You know, it's like what's that movie? Um oh, it's with um what's her face from uh, the Halloween movies? I can't remember anything. Oh, I don't know. I don't know actors. Jamie Lee Curtis. Okay. Jamie Lee Curtis is in a movie with Donald Sutherland where they're trapped on a boat and I think it's called The Virus. Yeah, I think it's called The Virus. And they, uh, some sentient electrical being from space travels oh, down to a really... Russian like uh, experiment vessel and takes over the computers and m mashes like uh, mechanical parts with fleshy parts from humans and other creatures. And it's just like Android nightmare. Sounds pretty yeah, spooky. Yeah, that's where you guys want to live. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Well, Zach and Marco, I want to thank you for coming out to Gaming Together. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. It's been a joy. I'd like to talk to you guys again sometime. Oh, yeah. We're definitely going to have to have you back. Uh, yeah. Maybe we can even play a game next time. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. That's a fun idea. Which, Nave, do you want to talk about our game we got coming up for next week? Yeah, it's... uh. What is the game for next week? I don't know. Oh, it's Morrowind. Yeah, it's Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. We're playing the nice. co-op mod. Are you guys familiar? Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. I've 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 grew I've grew up with uh, Arena and Daggerfall. Uh, I think the first time I played uh, any video game at like, you know, uh, what I would consider ridiculous length. I think it was like a seven and a half a seven and a half hour dungeon session in dagger fall and i had help i we were taking breaks and turns with my my friend joe who i grew up with because we were trying to find the tomb of lysandus in and the dungeons in dagger fall were literally procedurally generated they were or just random i think we were procedural just literally random and it was just miles of dungeon you had to trek it with and the map was useless so you had no idea where to go you had to mentally like track different levels you know 3d mapping oh my god it was insane and we were like 12 you know <laughs> yeah that sounds horrifying. Back when games <laughs> were good, I, I am played, I right? I played like well, yeah. 10 minutes of Morrowind be, just to make sure it was running okay with all the mods and stuff. And I am... I was looking forward to this, and now I'm a little terrified of it. Because this game, it is it is not modern. <laughs> like, I don't know what I was expecting. Oh, like, we just recently played an emulation of uh, Ocarina of Time with a co-op mod. And I could wrap my head around that game. But, like, I'm playing Morrowind, and all of my scar tissue from my childhood of trying to understand this game are, like, flooding back to me. I'm like, I don't even know how to punch this guy. I'm trying to pu just punch him. Like, I don't. how do I pull my fists out? Pressing every button on the keyboard. It's not working. <laughs> well, I'm very excited to play it. I'm still excited. I'm just nervous now. As soon still as we get used to, to it. it. All right. As soon as we get oh, yes, used it's... to it, we'll go, okay. Well, I think we need to call it here, co-op partners. So maybe we can go figure out how to punch this guy next time with Audio Pong. All right, gaming together. Thanks for having us. We didn't say where we could find you guys. So you guys have a podcast called Audio Pong. It's everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah. we're on Red Circle and Spotify. Spotify, and yeah. Apple, uh, Google Store. You can find us or Google uh, Podcasts. Where you know anywhere where you listen to a major podcast, you can find us there. You guys, Twitter, Twitch, uh, whatever, Twitch youtube uh not no. really yet we're really bad at the social media thing i don't know either we've got to uh yeah. change our minds about it or hire someone to do it i don't know we yeah, haven't figured we that out yet. step our game up on that that's for yeah. sure that's somewhere where we're lacking but you know i, I had tweeted we'll you handle it. last episode about the the halloween thing oh i forgot we should have did this at the front the halloween thing those three people sent in their things the late things remember no i don't i forgot you talking else about too. So the, the Halloween episode, three people sent in late submissions. Uh-oh. Now I've got to find it quick. Uh, definitely Dinosaur. one of them was Aaron. One of them was Aaron from the uh, – what episode did we do with him? What uh, episode did we do? Oh, that was Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3. That's it. Yeah. And, and the other one was Eric from Game Positive. And then the third one was Nick from the Quit the Build podcast, which we actually have an add-on. But uh, I sent it out to him because he's been so cool to us. Um, I can't find their thing. It's just lost in our fucking Google Drive, which is just a maze at this point. Feels like going through a Daggerfall map. But um, yeah. Do you want to get? Do you want to guess how? Like, did anything change, Philip? Do you think? Uh, yeah, nothing changed. Thing? Exact same results. You're correct. Nothing changed. Yeah. All I three of so. them plugged in. Um, whenever I plug uh, plugged in two of them three people flipped around and then when i put the third person in they just went right back to where they were before it's almost like people are all scared of the same things it's really weird yeah your it's list yeah the, was it 14 different i think it was 14 14 spooky uh, things we could think of on the spot yeah and uh another person i think this is a podcast so many games so little time i asked a question i was like i don't know what our what game we're talking about today but we're recording so just give me something to talk about and they brought up someone named Al, 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 Adolf, Adolf. I think it's Adolf. Adolf Sachs. It's it's not spelled like Hitler though. It's there's an e at the end, so it looks weird. And he's the inventor of the saxophone. And 
he's, he's, he's one of those guys who's almost died a whole bunch. I don't know why he wanted me to talk about this. So I, what I think he wanted was for me to interrupt a story and derail it by talking about this guy. <laughs> and I forgot about it. Paid off sex. And, uh, but he nearly drowned. He fell headlong three flights of stairs and cracked his head on the floor. He got poisoned four times. This guy's just Rasputin. That's what yeah, sounds he sounds like, like Rasputin. It's because um, of his devil he instrument he made. He swallowed a pen. <laughs> like a P-I-N. Like a pokey pen. Oh, no. Uh, he received severe burns from a gunpowder explosion. He was burned by a frying pan. It hit on the head well, by like some falling off a with that thing. <laughs> and asphyxiated from varnish fumes. I have no idea what a varnish is. A varnish is what you apply to like a wood to protect it. So, uh, and usually it's also like a stain. And yeah, if you're, uh, it, it's really the, well, I'm not going to get into it, but basically it's, uh, it's like uh, paint thinner or anything that's a toxic fume. If you don't have any uh, ventilation, it'll knock you out. Technically, you can you can die from it. Oh, oh absolutely! Yeah. But that's that's ridiculous. Sounds like he should have died. Yeah, he probably did. Someone that's has kind of dumb. <laughs> he took like a towel and just put his head over the paint can. That's what he did. <laughs> they used For apparently real. they used to call him Young Sax the Ghost. Apparently, all of this happened when he was like a kid, like not an adult. Oh, yeah. We're all seeing my mind. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I see this I see really it. dumb adult. Yeah. What was his rap name? Young Sax the Ghost. It does sound like a rap name, doesn't it? Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> there, there's you know a what mid- that sounds- oh, Go ahead. No, I was going to say that sounds like a Tiny Desk uh, concert, like Sax the Ghost. I could totally see that. <laughs> there's a submission in Yakuza 5, I think it is, where a character is att- someone's attempting to kill him because he's like investigating something. And so like you're walking down the street and then... like. It's literally like Looney Tunes, like like a vase falls from the sky from nowhere, <laughs> or like a piano or something. I don't remember, but it happens like eight times in a row. Like cars almost hit him, and he's just like, "I'm starting to feel like someone's trying to kill me." Like <laughs> it's, it's great, <laughs> and it's always a very dramatic, like very Japanese cutscene. He's like, "Oh, oh," and you have to quick time press X and backflip away. It's like it's very stupid. Oh man, that would be crazy. Like a like a really challenging japanese quick time like anime quick time i didn't think about that until you mentioned that would be kind of challenging like god of war but just really on steroids like you've got to be well that's kind of like how heavy rain and detroit becoming human beyond two souls those games are are pretty they're oh is that the one where you can yell sean yeah yeah Jason. That's that's the heavy rain that's the <laughs> Jason. oh it is sean too isn't it it's the other kid <laughs> that's heavy rain right yeah, yeah yeah i never played it but i know of that game because of that meme whatever you want to call it that i bug. love anything where like it's not supposed like the developers just complete oversight that you can just spam this button and he'll just keep screaming it another thing recently we played mass effect andromeda on the one hour one decision podcast and this kind of got patched out, so it's not as egregious. But back then, I am, I implore you to go look up Mass Effect Andromeda, like glitchy face, like funny montages, oh, yes. and stuff like stuff. I have watched these several times, actually. <laughs> they yeah, so you're familiar. Like they would have like looping animations that were about like a, like three quarters of a second long, but they were dramatic. So they were expecting you to pick a, a decision, uh, <laughs> like a like a dialogue choice. But if you just sit there, they'll just sit there and like move their head and like be it's like really, finish him it is like <laughs> it's like mortal Kombat. yeah perfect all right i think we can end it there so this has been gaming together maybe we can figure out how to punch this guy next time thanks again audio punk for coming out and see you co-op partners later see ya bye Peace.